Hello, I'm Dr. Morris Levin, and I will be speaking about vestibular migraine. I have been assigned the no answer to whether it exists or not. And that is my answer for today, but we know something is going on, and I will try to cover that. Here are my disclosures. I do some consulting uh, for one-time uh, consulting sessions for pharmaceutical companies. I am not on any speakers' boards, and you can see the rest. These are the questions that were supplied to us from Kony. In a capsule, vestibular migraine is a term used to describe episodic vertigo occurring in migraine patients. And the specific question is, is it best considered to be a distinct diagnosis or simply a sensory manifestation or even an aura of migraine? And the key questions we were supplied with are these. Do patients with migraine have vertigo? Is the vertigo an aura? Is episodic vertigo, which appears migrainous, a definable entity? What is the best definition of vestibular migraine? And I may pose a few more questions as we go on. So let's think about these questions. The first one, do patients with migraine have vertigo? Well, many authors have described an association. I think most clinicians notice an association. Migraine is certainly more common in patients with vertigo. Vertigo is certainly more common in migraineurs. Migraineurs are predisposed to motion sickness, which generally includes some element of vertigo. So does this association between migraine and vertigo imply causation or a link? Not necessarily. Let's look at the second question. Is the vertigo an aura? And if it's not an aura, what is it? Is it a prodrome? Is it an aura? Is it a postdrome? Does the migraine process itself include or cause vertigo? Are vertigo and the markers for heightened vestibular sensitivity in migraine due to all stimuli in migraine folks being perceived more intensely? So these are key questions we really don't have the answers to. And that's really going to be the theme of my discussion today. We just don't know enough. Another option might be that uh, vertigo is a migraine trigger. And finally, might migraine sufferers notice vestibulopathy symptoms, the vertigo caused by vestibulopathy, earlier than average, thus confounding the association? Well, if migraine aura includes vertigo, what might that be? Might it ref reflect uh, migraine with brainstem aura? And there is an entity, migraine with brainstem aura. Here it is. Vertigo is one of the many symptoms of migraine with brainstem aura. However, the definition requires that more than two of these symptoms be present so that if a patient has just vertigo, that doesn't supply enough information for the uh, diagnosis. So that would mean that vestibular migraine, if it's an aura phenomenon, would have to be a new entity of migraine with aura, which I showed here. But does that really fit with what we observe? Vestibular symptoms in patients with migraine don't just happen during the aura phase. They happen <clears throat> through prodrome into aura, into the headache phase, and through postrome. <clears throat> So if vertigo and migraine is not an aura, what is it? Could cortical spreading depression lead to vertigo? Could, possibly. <clears throat> but where would that be? Where in the cortex would that, that be? And why doesn't it spread? Could ischemia in the brainstem and cerebellum, and of course we do see white matter lesions in those places, could ischemia there cause vertigo? Or could there be parallel activation of vestibular and cranial nociceptive pathways perhaps in, in the parabrachial nucleus, or raphe nuclei, locus ceruleus, could, could that be all being uh, activated, leading to both head pain and vertigo? But all of this is speculation. We have absolutely no evidence for any of this. Next question, is episodic vertigo, which appears migranous, a definable entity? So let's think about that. And one of the best ways, I think, to think about vertigo and migraine is to think about the entities we do know a lot about and how they relate to each other and how they may relate to vestibular migraine. So here they, here they are. Here are the, the key, most common, most important diagnoses that one might um, 
confused with vestibular migraine, the diff differential diagnosis. Mal de debarquement, benign paroxysmal vertigo of childhood, which is thought to be a migraine precursor. Benign positional vertigo, persistent postural perceptual dizziness, Meniere's disease, migraine with brainstem aura, and vestibular pathology of some sort. The problem is they all overlap in terms of their clinical features. Not only that, but most have migraine features. And not only that, many patients could be diagnosed with more than one of these. So finally, what is the best definition of vestibular migraine? Well, let's think about what we would like to see in an ideal definition for this entity. It would be consistent with our understanding of the disease mechanisms. In other words, it's plausible. It would be valuable. In other words, it's testable and verifiable, not just an idea. Is it reliable? Is it consistent across patients and, and diagnosing physicians? Is it practical? Is it useful, in other words? And perhaps most importantly, does it produce but does it predict or uh, determine treatment and treatment response? In other words, does it help patients? So let's look at the definition, the ICHD and the Barani Society uh, definition of vestibular migraine. At least five episodes that last between minutes to hours, current or previous history of migraine, very important in this definition, with or without aura, one or more migraine features with at least 50% of these episodes including a headache with some migraine characteristics, photophobia and phonophobia, and a visual aura. So one or more of these. And most importantly, not better accounted for by another vestibular or ICHD diagnosis. And here's where that Venn diagram I showed you comes into play. There may be another very good entity that could explain um, this patient's symptoms and presentation. So is it valid? Does it, does it fit the uh, uh, does this diagnostic category predict other migraine features? It's not enough to just say that it um, uh, has some features because the definition includes some of those features. And the problem is we don't have lab findings to corroborate this. And it's not enough to say that people who meet the criteria uh, are shown uh, to have the criteria. That's a circular argument. For example, in a case series um, that I showed the reference below, Many patients uh, with VM reported phonophobia, many reported photophobia, many reported migraine auras. Uh, in another study, similarly, many patients with VM had all of these migraine features. However, to have the diagnosis of vestibular migraine, they had to have a history of migraine. Therefore, those features are not surprising at all. And to propose a category of probable VM, in other words, not all of the criteria are met, that also is not really sensible because the two conditions, vestibular conditions and people with migraine, are very common, and so the overlap would be expected. Is it reliable? We just don't know. Um, many studies uh, use variable criteria and cannot be compared with each other. Do patients maintain characteristics over time? We don't know. Does the definition identify the same patients if it were applied in different places, different times? We just don't know. Is it practical? Is this definition practical? Well, it insists on migraine features, some of which may be hard to elicit. It doesn't account for persistent symptoms. In other words, non-episodic vertigo. And it doesn't really lend itself because of this to easy inclusion of patients. And you know, the, maybe the most important thing is, will cl clinicians be able to use it consistently? I somehow doubt it. I think that has been shown not to be true. Does the diagnosis of VM, does this diagnosis help with treatment? Well, let's think about it. Acute treatment, very little evidence here regarding migraine therapy, for example. Zolmitriptan was shown in a very small N study to help, but again, very small numbers. Rhizostriptan prevented mild vertigo uh, induced by motion, but not more significant vertigo. What about prophylaxis? Again, there's very little evidence. There's weak evidence for response to migraine therapy, though many medications have been tried, including flunarazine, propranolol, topiramate, lamotrigine, and, and others. These are all small N studies or uncontrolled or both. There is evidence that Divalproex, a very effective migraine prophylactic, is not effective in VM. 
And it turns out that vestibular rehabilitation, useful for vestibulopathy, does help patients both with and without VM. There are some ongoing studies that I listed below, but so far we really don't have evidence. And this was a Cochrane Library, a Cochrane Association study, systemic review of VM treatment. Their objective was to look at all of the reports they could find to see if there is evidence from any of them for uh, successful prophylactic uh, treatment of VM, and they couldn't find anything. They looked at 558 reports, only a few of which they thought were valid enough to look at, and they found no evidence of any effective treatment. What does work in vestibular migraine, these patients who have these symptoms that sort of fit that category, vestibulopathy medication, anticholinergics, antidopaminergics, sedatives, and, uh, and so on. So is this definition useful? My conclusion is no, because is it consistent with our understanding of migraine me mechanisms? Is it sensible? There's no evidence for that, although speculation. Is it valid? In other words, is it testable? Really not so far. Is it reliable? In other words, is it consistent? There's no evidence that it is. Is it practical? Doesn't seem to be. And does it predict treatment response? Does it help patients? No. So let's revisit the questions. Do patients with migraine have vertigo? Yes, they do. Is the vertigo an aura? Probably not in most of these patients, although I imagine it can happen. Is episodic vertigo a definable migraine entity? Not yet, I, I'd say maybe. What's the best definition of vest vestibular migraine? We just don't know. So my conclusion is, is vestibular migraine a diagnosis that is useful? I'd say not yet. And really when we think about it, and here's what I'd like to focus on as maybe the, the take home message that I'd like to share with you today. Does it help us to understand the mechanisms in recurring idiopathic episodic vertigo? I think not. And it has to do with the fact that there is so much we still don't know. And that Venn diagram I showed you with so much overlap in, in, uh, in syndromes. And secondly, does this diagnosis help us determine the best treatment for patients? No. And to me, these are the most important questions. There's, there's a research question, there's a mechanism question, and then, then there is a practical clinical question. And the diagnosis just does not help us. However, is vertigo commonly experienced by migraine patients? Yes. Do we understand central vestibular pathophysiology in patients with vertigo and migraine? No, we don't. So might there be a causal linked mechanism of vertigo in all of these entities, PPPV, mal de debarquement, Meniere's, and migraine? Yes. So what I did was I put together what I think may be the most important research questions, and here they are. How to validate, and we, we really should try to validate a working diagnosis of this entity that we want to call vestibular migraine. Maybe we should call it something else. Maybe we should call it central idiopathic uh, uh, vertigo. But we really need to figure out a way to validate it. And it's not enough to just say these patients fit the, the, uh, the uh, criteria. Another research question, do characteristics of vestibular migraine symptoms uh, resemble those of other aura symptoms? Maybe they do. Maybe they do more fit in that aura category or Maybe there are patients who fit best in that category in terms of timing and duration and so on. Are there physiological or imaging markers of vestibular migraine? That would be terrific. That would be a way to really firm up this diagnosis, but so far we just can't seem to do it, although many have tried with both, with both vestibular testing and imaging. It'd be nice to know hereditary patterns in VM families. That could, I think, lend, lend some credence to this diagnosis. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm back to my clinical question, which migraine medications and other medications might be useful in these patients, either acutely when they're absolutely miserable or uh, to prevent the symptoms of this vestibulopathy, which we are calling vestibular migraine. So I, I suppose my real answer to this question is a question mark, and I look forward to more and more data on the topic, and thank you very much for listening.